uh, Ukrainians should not be singled out for war crimes. And especially World War II is a, is a war where you are getting a number of groups fighting ancient battles in the midst of a campaign between Germans and Soviets. They're somehow on one side or the other. They're dragged onto one side or the other. You cannot be neutral in this battle. You have to take a side. Mm -hmm. And some very nasty things happened in that period. Mm -hmm. And what happened in Volin or Volhynia was perhaps one of the biggest episodes. And that episode, I think, has been neglected in Ukraine for, for the reasons just expressed, that history was not treated properly, Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's being treated properly today. The problem with Berlin will not go away with the removal of the current Polish government, however, because it's long-standing. And where the problem lies is that there seems to be a big difference between how Ukrainians are one day, how they are the next. Poroshenko goes to Poland, lays a wreath on the memorial to Berlin, bows before the Poles, and then Petrovich said, well, maybe we didn't do it after all. Or maybe it was part of a long history of conflict. Or maybe they started it and we simply respond. But when you get 60,000 people killed in one area and another 40,000 in another, this is not a minor event. This is a major atrocity. And to my mind, an apology would go an awful long way. And even acknowledgement of crimes has been done by a number of governments over the years, from Germany after World War II, um, even Canada with the Aboriginal peoples uh, three or four years ago when we issued the apology and started the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, and on a level of crimes, by the way, uh, I don't think there's much difference. It wasn't successful because they boycotted Canada's anniversary. Well, they boycotted one event. But nevertheless, I don't, I don't think that you're going to get a solution to that right away either. But nevertheless, I think the, the government attitude was, was correct. But I find... Um, that the sort of elimination of Ukraine's main historians from the debate and the idea that, well, don't get me wrong completely, by the way, because I think decommunization as a policy is a good thing. I think it's good to get rid of Lenin's statues. Well, I think it's good to get rid of so, a minute. Yeah. But It's all interconnected. It's all got to be interconnected. But I do think that the approach is, is wrong and that mm. the Institute of National Remembrance is an unfortunate blip, actually, in post-Soviet Ukraine. I really don't think it does, it's progressive, and I don't think um, that what it's doing should be supported. Why do I think David is, um, is off, off track here? Well, first of all, he's focusing, as all, it seems, most of the academics focus on Volin 43. So the so only thing that happened was Volin 43, and the only people killed were the Poles. Well, I'm sorry, David, you're wrong. And here I would, I would actually support Vyotrovich in his writing where he talks about this being part of a longer civil war between Poles and Ukrainians. And you can't explain what took place in Volin without understanding the context and the previous period in time. But let's go back. These things happen in the context. 1930, pacification. The first massacres of civilians were done by Poles against Ukrainians in the light, late 1930s in Holm, Holm and Pidlasha. Orthodox churches were destroyed. Um, Ukrainians were massacred. Then in 1942 in the same region, and they then fled to Volin. In Volin in 1943, according to Snyder, Leiber, George Lieber, and Magocci, the, the true figures for those killed are in the region of Poles, 50 to 60,000, and Ukrainians, 20,000. For some reason, everybody forgets the Ukrainians, including David, just now. Um, why is that? I mean, and then it's not just that the Ukrainians are forgotten who were killed. 20,000, yes, it's less than 60, but still 20,000 civilians. Um, it's that the Polish figures are exaggerated ad infinitum. We're now we're here in Poland, it's 200,000 genocide. Um, if you look at opinion polls in Poland, they think that only Ukrainians did the killing, there were no Ukrainians killed, and that the figures were hugely inflated. So I'm afraid there is a lot of uh, deception, a lot of misinformation, there's a lot of um, uh, bad writing about this. 
Um, and the events in Volin then went moved to Galicia. And, of course, the, the, the end period of this is the Soviet ethnic cleansing of Poles and Ukrainians each way. Poles going to communist Poland, Ukraine's going to communist Ukraine, which was in far greater numbers than what happened in Volin. And then, of course, the civil war um, and the, the atrocities committed by Poles against Ukrainians in southeastern Poland, in Lemkivshina. And then, of course, the final act was the deportation, Axia Wisła, 